Good morning and welcome to sunny Brantford, Ontario, home of my new project car. This is a 1971 Opel GT I'm calling the Hopeful Opel. We're going to talk about why it has that name, why I think these are so cool, and what this one needs to be back on the road and what we're going to do with it. Let's start with the basics. Opel is GM's German subsidiary. So this is actually a German car. And despite the fact that it looks like a mini Corvette, it's actually all steel. These things are 100% steel. There's no fiberglass like they are in a Corvette. Manufactured between 1968 and 1973, they made just over 100,000 of these cars, but most of them went to the US and Canada. It has a 1.9 liter cam in head engine, which is Opel's weird thing. It's not an overhead cam. It's got push rods. It's, it's one of their own weird things. It makes about 90 horsepower from the factory, a real powerhouse, and it's connected to a four speed transmission. So my Opel story actually starts about six years ago. In April 2014, I was new to Toronto. I had just moved. I was driving around and I saw a red sports car that I had never seen before. It was parked next to a mechanic shop. It had faded paint, but I knew it looked cool and I liked it. I did some research. I found out that it was an Opel and I discovered the really cool links between the Opel and the C3 Corvette that I obviously love. That's because the guy you need to know is Claire McKeegan. And he was on the GM design team for the C1 and C2 Corvette programs. They transferred him to Opel and you can see the Corvette influence in the Opel GT. That car I saw six years ago made such an impression on me that I actually bought an engine rebuild kit for it five years ago and I still have it. So when the opportunity came to buy this car for $300, I had to say yes. Now, not only did I get a car, I also got a parts car which was described to me as being across a creek at the bottom of a ravine. So retrieving that car is gonna be quite an adventure in itself. Now, this car needs a lot of work, as you can probably see, and let's start with the body. There are lots of places on this car where a magnet does not stick, and there are copious and dubious uses of Bondo throughout. I'm not actually super concerned about the outer bodywork and the quarter panels and such, even though this is a unibody. What concerns me the most is that the main structure in the floor is completely rotten. You can see that the main floor section has just rotted away and it's gone. I'm gonna have to weld in a new frame and a new floor so that the car is structurally sound. The other thing I'm gonna have to work on is that the rear trailing arm mounts are going into that floor which is currently rotted so obviously they'll have to be remade as well this car notably is missing its lower valence you can see it's just a piece of like aluminum siding that some guy has glued in there so that's gonna have to go luckily the parts car i have appears to have that piece so hopefully i can weld in that piece from the parts car uh it's not structural i just can't stand the way it looks and i think that and a chrome bumper pounding out some of the dents on the front will really bring the front end of the car around now mechanically, I know that before I got it, this car has not moved or driven in 15 years. In fact, the transmission of the car is sitting out there on the driveway. You can see how tiny the thing is. Apparently the guy took it apart for a clutch job. It never went back together. The other problem is that they left it sitting with the distributor cap off it for all these years and the distributor itself is just rusted up and gross. It's not gonna work. But that said, I did turn the engine over. It's not seized. I pulled spark plugs. They look healthy. I checked the dipstick. The oil looks like beer. It looks perfect. So I think this engine would run again. So the Cliff's Notes version, fix the structural rust, fix the front valence, go through the mechanicals, make it run and just make it work and then fix the details later. Here's how the video situation this car is gonna work. Basically, this is a huge project. It's gonna take over a year easily. So you can expect at the end of that to have a very nicely produced half hour episode that will show the entire saga from start to finish. However, in the meantime, I'm gonna be releasing a few videos that update the progress along the way to keep you guys up to date on the hopeful Opal. I call it that by the way, because this is a car that needs so much optimism to bring it back. This thing is so close to being pure scrap metal. And to a lot of people, it probably is, but I see potential in this car and I have hope for the little Opal. So thanks for watching Classic Cars and Clayton, and you'll see a lot more of this Opal in the coming weeks and months. And hopefully not years. Ugh.